All right, praise the Lord. We want to continue with sex, sex, and more sex. The Bible talks about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that's in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We wasn't taught this. See, we, brothers and sisters, we have to overdose on this. We have to overdose on this. And whether I talk to the brothers, I'm talking to the sisters as well, even if I say I'm talking directly to the brothers, because the brothers draw in the sisters. But Jesus started with the men first so that the men will be the leaders that they're supposed to be. And what happens is the world... industrial wise um, corporate wise it's taught us to be lustful well look look, look at how how many clothes shoes sneakers we're greedy for everything come on brothers. money cars toys what wasn't it a, 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 a rapper that says I sold my 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 um I sold my soul, it was a, I know it's a crappy deal, but it came with a few toys and a Happy Meal. I mean, it comes with food and clothes and, and, and the trinkets of the world. But we sell our souls. Satan does not love you. Even if you think Satan loves you, Satan does not love you. So it becomes sex, sex, and more sex because... As human beings, we can become so addicted to sex. So it's sex, 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 and more sex because it stimulates something in the brain, and it, it it's a it's like it's an uh, adrenaline solver. It's a pain killer. It's a drug like any other drug and alcohol and we abuse it and what i'm telling you brothers as well as sisters we abuse ourselves we are abusing ourselves and i know it's easier to say what the bible says and it's harder to do it but at least you need to know so we'll have a goal to set for ourselves because even when men or women run around and run around, uh, because I said they're not committed. Sometimes a man is committed to a woman, but he's still committing fornication and adultery. Sometimes a woman is committed to a man, but they still committing fornication and adultery. So that's not righteous commitment. You're committed, but you're not righteously committed. Because you're like, I'm going to get it I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. Again, we're not talking about if a woman leaves a man and she's gone and a man leaves a woman. And you have to give that man or that woman some time to find out if they're really gone. Now, if you see a man with another woman, a woman with another man, because the Bible says uh, unless you stay, uh, uh, you separate and then you stay unmarried, mean unsexual. That's what it's meaning. Now, if you feel I'm wrong, okay. To find out what it means then But now But once you find out that that man that left you Is walking down the street with a woman And come on some things just go together Now come on we, we can't just assume everything Because every time a man is with a woman That doesn't mean anything Every time a woman is with a man That doesn't mean anything But come on You basically at time will, You give person enough time it, It'll prove themselves Certain way they walk, certain way they talk, certain things they do. You don't have to be in the bedroom with a person to know uh, that that something's going on. And sometimes a person can have a suspicious mind. And uh, I've often talked about when you talk to a person, it can. Be, it can. That doesn't mean that there aren't that there are men that talk to females and they don't do anything and there are women that talk to men and they don't do anything it don't have to go that way and that's why we need more strength in the lord okay 
this this is what has helped me with women. This is why I talk to women about the Jezebel spirit and stuff like that. I do to to build a wedge, so in case anything does happen like that, so you throw that throw that in there because uh, I feel like it's a double standard. A women can get away with women and then women have told me i don't know what they've told you but women have told me they can get away with cheating they can get away with murder they can get away with anything because they're smarter than men and the way society is set up it looks that way but let me show you why it looks that way satan came for the woman to take the man off of his muslims would say dean so I'm not Muslim, I'm Christian, I'm born again. So take man off his focus of God, which still would mean the same thing when a Muslim say they're on their deen. On your practice, on your agenda, on your discipline with God. So as men, we need to get more discipline in God and stop focusing, focusing so much on the vagina. Now, if you focusing on vagina it should be with one woman and you should be grooming her and i guess that's why some men rather cheat because when you start grooming a woman even the men that do have a woman that they're committed to but they're still committed to cheating let me say that again they do have a woman that they're committed to but they still are committed to cheating and i'm and, and if, if they're cheating with women, women are cheated. So even though I was, I'm talking to men, I'm also talking to women. I'm talking to everyone. Everything is for everyone, but everything is not for everyone. Everything is for every man, but everything is not for every man. Everything is for every woman, but everything is not for every woman. You get the point? So that way it covers an oxymoron, but it covers you either way you want to go. Because people start fighting you when you step on their toes. But we're greedy as human beings for everything. The world has taught us to be greedy, lustful. We're greedy for food. We're never satisfied. We're always looking for that next taste. Always looking for that next fashion. Always looking for the next knowledge and philosophy. Always looking for that new movie. Always looking for that sometime a new man, a new woman. The Bible says, love not the world. First Timothy, first, jo first John 2, 15, love not the world. And that's why it's saying don't have the compassion of the world because the compassion of the world is really hatred for yourself. And you don't know it because it's Satan's spirit raining on you and, and draining you and wetting you up and inspiring you. And you think, oh, man, I'm a successful, I'm a successful person. You're really failing. But it looks like you're succeeding. And then let me go back. See, men have, though some of the men that cheat, some of the men that cheat, that have one woman, some just cheaters. But some of them, they have a problem. They like the woman. They really care about the woman. And sometimes women with the men. We, anything I say, you can put it in vice versa, okay? So let me stay like the Bible does, 99% to the men. And you can vice versa. And you can say women too. Or, or if I say something about women, you can say men too. Yes, yes, no doubt about it. No problem, okay? Let's get the point. But a man's job, like Jesus is the bridegroom, is to groom your woman. And your woman, as we were talking the other day, might feel like, I got the sex. I don't have to listen to you. You already compromised. See, this is the reason why boyfriend and girlfriend should be no hanky-panky. Not too much even holding hands or kissing or nothing like that because it leads to hanky-panky, which means to join in. See? When you when you when you put those pieces to the puzzle together, you joined. When you holding hands, kiss, you joining. Unity, fusion, welding, unionizing, compadreism, connecting, unifying, yoking, binding. See those words? Synonymous. With marrying, unionizing, and the two become one. So you com you may be committed to a one, but your eyes go greedy 
looking for other because you get dissatisfied sometimes or that could be thrown in the equation because I can't groom her. Women could say, I can't groom her because most of the time they say a woman changes a man. See, that's popular in the world and that looks like it's supposed to be. A woman's supposed to change a man. The beauty changes the beast. And the, and the beast represents the devil. But in Revelations chapter 17 or 18, the woman is riding on the beast. So we got to be careful when a beauty tames the beast. It sounds good in stories and folklore. It sounds good the night comes and saves the day. Oh, praise the Lord. But Jesus is the night. And if you're a warrior, if you're a knight, you're supposed to be fighting for Jesus. But warriors fight what? Other warriors. So when a woman says they like warriors, I was watching a movie the other day. A woman was connected to a man, but when she got around other men, because that man didn't want to fight, he didn't want to gun play, she was up in another man's face. They even caught her kissing another man. But the man that even though he allowed himself to kiss the woman, he told her, you're not a good woman. But watch men, they still will stick their penises in a vagina and women will open their vaginas up, even though they may know that it's a compromising situation. Because with the man, even though he was looking at her down in her man, she was building him up, telling him how of a warrior or how much of a, uh, 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 a macho man he was. And the man she was with, she must have liked him for something, money or something, looks or several other things. But she didn't like the fact that he wasn't macho. Then we can get into play and switch and switch with different women and different things. Some of them will agree with this and that and some of them will disagree and some of them will. But, but the man still kissed her. And the father and the wife walked right up on the guy while he's kissing the woman. Of course, she made the first move, but he could have said, uh-uh, don't do that. How often will you men, if a woman makes the first move, will you say, uh-uh, don't do that? How often will you women, if a man makes the first move, if you have a, a woman or you have a man already and say, uh-uh, don't do that? Or will you let your ego get in the way because something that you're dissatisfied with the woman that supposed to, you're supposed to be union with, something that you're dissatisfied with the man that you're supposed to be union with, Got you dissatisfied, so you, you're you trying to replace it with this other man, with this other woman, these other men, these other women. And that's what people do all the time. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Now, biblically, once you cross that boundary, or show forth that you're going, because once you catch a man kissing another woman, a woman kissing another man, I mean, come on. You're not just talking about no pet. Come on. I mean, even even that's showing compassion. And that shows that you'll go somewhere else. That's why some people get jealous. God is a jealous God, so there's a righteous jealous, jealousy as well as there's an unrighteous jealousy. So you know conversation can take a man, take a woman into other avenues. But that's why we as men and women have to really get married and dedicated to God because people the devil through the people the devil in us can cause us to drive ourselves crazy drive others crazy or the devil and other people can drive us crazy if we're not strong in the Lord even if you're strong in the Lord you can get a little bit unbalanced but you have to be able to grab yourself and get back on track and you can forgive. Didn't God throw Adam and Eve out when they committed spiritual adultery? He got rid of them. Not that God is not a forgiving God, but God watched them play it out. So it was as if Eve was kissing the devil all the time while she was talking to him. She was, she was being courted and seduced by the devil. She was... Oh. Hmm. Or, or googly eyed. Uh huh. And then googly eyed Adam with it. Come on, baby. And he goes, oh, hmm. And God is standing off 
They left God out. So God divorced them, separated them. Get out of this righteous garden. And that doesn't mean men don't forgive women, women don't forgive men. And you can forgive. It don't mean don't get back with a man, don't get back with a woman. But once you see something is consistency, maybe that's not the woman for you. Maybe that's not the man for you. Me, I know I'm a very forgiving person, just throwing a little bit of something in there. And I haven't been in any relationship with a female that wasn't basically long term. But if a man don't, you, man, 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 God gives you a woman. A woman is your, is, is, the Bible said, God said, even though Paul said he wished that all were like the women that were widowed and unmarried like Paul, unmarried. That's not what God said, though. That's what Paul said. You got to know the difference. When you go to 1 Corinthians, he starts out with what you wrote to me. It's good for a man not to commit fornication. It's better for, for everyone to have their own wife, their own husband. Then he got into about himself. He didn't, but he was strong enough not to deal with no woman. Now that means he wasn't married. That means no sex for him. He wasn't dipping and dabbing, talking about he was single, but he was dipping and dabbing. No, he was single because if he was dipping and dabbing, that would have been called fornication. And that's what a lot of men say. I'm not marrying no, and even if they've been married before, women too, if I, they've been married before, I'm not marrying nobody, but they, but you're saying I'm a dip and dab. That's fornication. That's what I'm telling you. And that's on top of the list of Galatians of what will keep you out of heaven, sexual sin. So when you do, so what Paul was actually saying in first Corinthians chapter seven, like you co committed to God. You're going to be committed to a man, committed to a woman, at least you should be. Because even if Paul said it's going to be a time when people are married or as if they're not married. In God, a man, that's how Adam should have been, not a woman. Because if Adam had act like he was not married to Eve and went to God, he would have been in righteousness. See, Eve could not do that because Eve was made for the man. See, you women are made for the man. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses um, 1 through 9. A woman was made for the man. So you can't act like you're not married. Oh, you could. You could do whatever you want. Women are doing whatever they want. But righteously, even in God. So even if you were not married to a man, then you have to be married to a God, either Satan or God Jehovah. You either going to be married to the right to the righteousness of God spiritually, or you're going to be married to the world. Or you're going to be going through the two timing of the world and God trying to transition because then, you know, they say the average woman doesn't leave a man until she has another one. And the average man, when we, let me change that word from average. A lot of women don't leave a man if they have one until they have another one, just like a job. They don't leave the job until they have another job. A lot of men don't leave a woman until they have another woman. And some of them, some men and some women already have one. So that's why they keep their, their options open. They keep a lot of telephone numbers and stuff. Not all. Everyone that has telephone numbers, it don't have to be that. But a lot. So if you put a lot on the left, that's a lot. And if you put a lot that don't do it, it's a lot. So there's a lot that do and a lot that don't. So you have to at least consider. And a lot of people, that's what they're doing. They're building up a safety net. Well, if I lose out with him or her, I have another him or her to replace. If I lose out with this job, I have another job. And, and people are like that because that's the way the world has taught us. So in the world, it's intelligent. But with God, it's maybe lust. Now, Adam could act like once he found that the Eve was connected to the devil, committed spiritual adultery. She didn't have sex with the devil like some taught and from the Strong's concordance and people that follow the Strong's teaching of, 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 of theology. She didn't have sex with him, but it was just as bad because don't the Bible even say that if a man thinks about having sex with a woman in his heart, in his mind, He's already had sex with her. So they're not totally wrong. So Eve didn't have to lay down her naked body for the devil to penetrate her with his penis. But he already penetrated her mind. 
See, a woman don't have to necessarily be penetrated with a man's penis. First, he's penetrating with her mind because a woman is the is the property of any man, like it or not. That's the Bible. The, if the man is the head, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, read the first nine verses. If the man is the head, whatever man she lays with, even if she's the most feminist woman, the most world equal rights woman, and you can't get away from the logic of what God has put out there that if you lay down with a man, he puts his, his piece of his puzzle into your puzzle. You're his, even if it's but for a time, a few minutes, a few hours, a few weeks, a few days. He be, You belong to him, even though you may fight him and say, no, I'm a feminist movement. I do what I want, blah, blah, blah. And man, she belongs to you, even though she fights you and you don't have no control over. But that's what, why it's so confusing, because the way God made it is the two become one. So whether you like it or not, even if it's just for sex and pleasure and lust and greed and ego, for a moment, she's yours, but she's not yours. Even if she belongs to him, 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 or just him. But for a minute, it's like she belongs to me. I'm, I'm with her. So Eve already committed spiritual adultery. So Adam was supposed to get to God. And that's what you and I are supposed to do. Adam was supposed to groom her. Just like he called out the names of everything, he called her name. He called her name Eve. He called her woman. He was supposed to groom her. And we are men are supposed to be groomed by God, and we groom 